If you want a delicious Detroit-style thick crust pizza, here's a way to make it at home. We're starting with our dough, combining flour, sugar, active dry yeast, and salt. Now we're adding in our water and incorporating it until we've got a loose dough. Loosely shape it into a ball and then place it into a well-greased bowl. Cover that with plastic wrap and let it proof at room temperature for at least an hour or in the fridge overnight. Remove it from the bowl and cut it into two halves. Place one of the halves in your baking dish, which should have high edges for the classic Detroit style. Start flattening your dough, but don't stretch it. Cover it with plastic wrap once again and give it at least another hour at room temperature to proof. Now it should be much easier to spread into the corners of the dish. We coated our dough with some olive oil and put it in the oven at max temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. Generously cover your dough with cheese, making sure to even cover the edges. This will ensure that when it melts, you'll get a deliciously crispy edge. Next, apply your sauce and whatever seasoning you want, and your toppings. We went with a bunch of pepperoni. Finally, bake your pizza at maximum temperature for another 10 to 15 minutes. Homemade sour straws, and thanks to Matthew for the suggestion. In a pot, put nine ounces of Jello, then 1.25 ounces of unflavored gelatin. One tablespoon of citric acid, give it a little mix, and let sit and bloom for five minutes. Heat this up until that gelatin has dissolved. Now we're gonna pour liquid into our plastic cup. Now put your straws in. And you can just let them sit until they harden up. When your gelatin forms nicely, we're gonna run it over some warm water to loosen it up. When it's out of the cup, we're just gonna melt the rest of this gelatin. Now separate the straws one by one. Mix a half a cup of cornstarch, half a cup of powdered sugar. Just take your thumb and push out the gelatin. Cover it with your non-stick solution. For the exterior coating, we're gonna mix one third cup sugar and one tablespoon of citric acid. Place on a cold, damp cloth. Take another cold, damp rag and press on top. Now one by one, dip these in the sour solution. Now it's time for the taste test. Make homemade barbecue wings. Buttermilk, pickle juice. Let these sit for half an hour. For our barbecue sauce, we'll start with one and a half cups brown sugar, one and a half cups ketchup, half a cup of vinegar, half a cup of water, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons mustard, a sprinkle of garlic powder, sprinkle of smoked paprika, dash of hot sauce, and a few tablespoons of butter. Whisk over medium heat until thickened. For our dredge, we'll add potato starch. I've said it once and I'll say it again, don't you dare be frying with flour. Garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, smoked paprika, black truffle salt, and pepper. We'll start by frying these at 325 for about seven minutes. Then fry another few minutes at 375 till golden brown. Now that right there is crispy. Lemon zest and that sweet, delicious barbecue sauce. Oh baby. That's just pure deliciousness right there. That's perfect barbecue. Make these chocolate meringue cookies with just a few ingredients. Mix egg whites and sugar with a whisk or an electric mixer until the color turns white and soft peaks form. Then add cocoa powder and chocolate chunks. Mix in the chocolate until it's just combined. Then on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, use two spoons to create little mounds of batter. Bake these at 300 degrees for about 25 minutes. They'll come out crispy on the outside and gooey on the inside. How to make a fried onion smash burger, my favorite burger. Slice onions as thin as possible, no thick cut for this. Get a cast iron pan ripping hot and toast the buns first. Then take about three ounce balls of 80-20 ground beef. They need to be 20% fat as the fat is going to cook these burgers and keep it moist. Season with salt, top with the sliced onions, salt the onions, then smash the burgers into the pan. Wait for a crust to form and then flip. If the pan is hot enough, it should take only about two minutes. Then add a slice of cheese, the top bun, and then put the bottom bun on top of the top bun, and they will steam to warm up. Then pick up the burger, place it on the bottom bun, serve it with pickles and special sauce, but I like it straight up with ketchup. Forget about it. Any bottle of soda and pour out an instant slushy on command. Okay, I need to learn this. a bottle of room temperature soda and okay. start shaking it violently. We want as much pressure to build up inside as we can get. And set them in the freezer for Better 3 be hours and 15 minutes. Watch what happens if we simply release the pressure, tighten the cap, and turn it upside down. Okay. In just 3 seconds, the entire bottle is turned into an this. icy gotta soda do this. slush.
baking vitamins? Why are we baking? Okay, do not try it. Synthetic simple supplements burn. Real ones don't. That's not real. This is not fat. This is actually glue. Yeah, this food at home. Let's make Chick Fil A nuggets. Cut your chicken breast into the size of nuggets. You know what I mean. Marinating the chicken is key in this recipe because we want some good, juicy, flavorful chicken. After marinating, add one egg and mix it up. Now we're gonna make the flour and breadcrumb mixture. I didn't measure the seasonings. Just go with your heart. Add the chicken and shake it like a Polaroid picture. Fry the nuggets until golden brown. Who y'all think has the best fast food nuggets? I say Chick Fil A, but McDonald's will always have my heart. Follow and share for more recipes. I Insane food hacks. Place some bacon in a glass and fill it with Coca-Cola. After a few minutes, you can take them out, put them on a baking sheet, and bake until they're nice and crispy. Now you've made some delicious bacon candy. Watch what happens when you cut a banana, insert a popsicle stick, freeze it for a few hours, and then dip it into warm peanut butter and chocolate. Now just let it harden, cover it in caramel, and you've got a perfect summer snack. And lastly, here's a way to make ice cream in just 15 minutes. Pour some orange juice in a plastic bag, then put it in another bag and fill it with ice. Add some salt to prevent it from completely freezing and then wrap it in a paper towel. Check back 10 minutes later and you'll have a perfect orange slushie ready for you to enjoy. I told y'all this food at home, we're making granola yogurt bites. Get you a ripe banana, mix it up with some chia seeds, cinnamon, and honey, baby. Add in your coconut shavings, oats, and mix it all up. Get your muffin tin greased up and make the oat mix into cup shapes. And before you say it's too fast, the full recipe is on my website, but I know y'all don't be listening. Freeze for a bit, bake for a bit, and look, homemade granola. Add in your favorite yogurt, fruits, eat, and do a little dance. Follow and share for more recipes.